Well, Lola, um, you have had an amazing career. I know you started dancing here in Philadelphia, where we're talking to you, as a very young girl. And then from that, you ended up, first of all, on Broadway, right, with Sammy Davis Jr. And that's, I think, where your fame began. But you conquered almost every element in the entertainment industry. Recording, films, television, Las Vegas. Um, tell me a little bit about your career, and also I know you have an interesting perspective on your career. You're not just a performer, you're an evangelist. You're speaking out for the Lord. So tell me a bit about how you got here. Well, I was taken to dancing school to ballet lessons at three, and I took dancing lessons, ballet, jazz, tap, African-Cuban, um, um, everything that, I, that they teach I took. And by the age of 17, I was a runaway. I left home. I went to New York. Went to New York, and uh, over a year and a half, two years period, I auditioned for a big show, Golden Boy, with Sammy Davis. But you know, I didn't, I didn't seek to be famous ever. When I ran away from home, I had twenty-three dollars, twenty-six dollars, and the reason I was dancing in all these little clubs is because I had to pay my bills. But I never thought a little dancer could be a star. I mean. What dancer did I know except for like Fred Astaire type, you know? But for me, I wasn't the best ballet dancer or tap dancer, so I knew I wouldn't, I just needed to make money, make a living. So seeking fame is the first thing. I did not seek it. I was astounded. There were moments in time when it just, doors just opened and I was like pushed through. It's like God says, you're going to be famous whether you know it or not or like it or not. But you know, the beauty of the whole thing is he had a purpose for all of us. And with my little bitty talent of dancing, he can take the smallest thing like he did with, you know, that stone that brought down Goliath and make the most of it. And then um, next thing I know, I was just climbing this ladder. And even my friends and different people were, who were working hard were saying, why is she going so fast up this mountain? You know, she's, she has no specific gift. Some of us sing better than her, dance better than her. What is it? It's God. And so that, I think that's the message to everybody. You don't know where you begin, where he's going to lead you to where you should end up. So you must pray about it. I didn't pray about everything, but I did keep God in my life, in my heart. And my secretary and I would say prayers every evening. So the beauty is that at this point, that fame doesn't belong to me. He has claimed it. It belongs to him. I hand it over with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength and say, do with me as you will with this fame you have given me. And I live to see how I will die with it to his glory. Yes, I think many people in the performing arts seek that fame as if it's an end in itself. Or they want to be well known so that they can make a lot of money and their egos are uh, overblown, people know who they are. Um, but it sounds like you never really went about it that way yourself, uh, but you must have known people who did. Being in the middle of the business as you were, and being as successful as you were, you must have known people. I think even you've told me before that you had moments where you realized that if you were doing it all for yourself, it was empty. Didn't you have a moment where you felt very empty in the midst of your success? Yes, in the 70s. I remember throwing myself down on the floor and crying to heaven, take this away from me. It's empty. I'm, I'm miserable. It's not fulfilling. What do you have me down here to do? Because if this is it, I'm done. If all I have to do is wake up every day and, and get dressed in, in these clothes and go on the stage and pretend I'm somebody I can't be anymore, I was changing. I couldn't go out and pretend to be this, this person with all this vanity that says, I'm Lola Falana. Mm -hmm. meant nothing to me. But all of a sudden, that was clear. I couldn't go out there and be that person. I had to be in this world for God. God was, God was calling me. I couldn't be in the world for myself anymore. So the self was, was um, being overpowered by the love of God. And yet you think that the fame that you got uh, is being used by God, correct? Yes. The beauty of, oh, I love this question you're asking me. God gave me, a, I'm born on September the 11th. God gave me a prophecy on September the 10th, the night. The night before I was on my face, prostrate, crying to heaven about the babies, the, the abortion of, of 50 million babies, and asking God, why? Why is it going so far? Why don't you do something? 
There's a little baby in somebody's stomach. There's a lot of babies in somebody's stomach right now. It should be a safe place that are going to die on my birthday. If you let this go on, it's going to keep going because the people don't care anymore. They don't feel pain or love for these babies. So I cried and I, and I, I about a half an hour, I was on the floor. Just, and all of a sudden, everything became still beyond anyone's understanding, any human understanding. And then I saw the image in shadow of the Trinity, and with them was the Blessed Virgin Mary. And then there was a moment when everything got very still even more as I watched them looking at me. And they were looking at me, looking at them. And there was a moment in time when we were just gazing at one another. Then I heard these words. This is the last day things will be as they are. Tomorrow, nothing will be the same again. And nothing has been the same or will be. Because whatever God says must come true. And when he says nothing will be the same again, that word nothing is powerful. Because that puts, it takes everything, puts everything on, on the table. And when he says again, I believe it means until the second coming of Christ. And you look at all these weather phenomena happening, everybody's saying, what's going on, what's going on? I think God is preparing the way that will bring his son back.